Y'all see my bike? I ain't been riding in a minute. But yeah, I get with it. Need to get out there. It's the type of shit that, you know, they can set up in the joint and just like wish I was out. When I get out, I'm gonna give me a dirt bike and shit like that. I think I accomplished that. You know what I mean? Accomplishing everything he said he wanted to accomplish while I was in the joint. That's what we supposed to do. These are one of my hobbies right here. I always like fucking with the dirt. Love, love dirt bikes and quads and shit. This is only right that I had to give me one, right? Show you a ride. YouTube Nation, what it do, y'all? Welcome back to the show. For everybody who's first time tuning in, please like, share, and subscribe. What's cracking, y'all? Happy holidays to all. Hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Me, myself, I've just been working. I've been on some six-day shit. Six days... 12 hours. It's been grind mode. Your boy ain't had time for too much of nothing but work. Work, 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 and other shit. You know what I mean? So that's life, and we love it. Yeah, we love it. Anyway, y'all, I want to share something with y'all. I want to tell a story about one of my loved ones. I got many loved ones. As you can see, I come up with multiple homies. I'm like, I just, because I just was really out there. So I ran with so many different homies. I, this is how I look at things like this. I feel like if you came up banging and you only ran with one person, that just two dudes, your whole career is crippling the blood and whatever, you limited. Your cripping is limited, my nigga, because that's all you know is what bro know. You know what I'm saying? You don't know nothing else. But when you come up uh, running with a, a variety of different homies from different sides of your hood and homies from other hoods, that's like, you know, more information. That's more knowledge about this lifestyle. You just... You just more wisdom in the, in the gang culture type shit, right? So, you know, you just, you just know more. You know very little when you run with one person, when you limit yourself to one person, two people. That's anything in life. That's that's the lesson we learn. You limit yourself to just fucking with your hood, you limit it. If you limit yourself to fucking with these dudes in your circle, that's it, you're limited. You, don't, you only know so much what they're going to share, which you're not knowing nothing else because you limit yourself. Right. So me, I ran with so many different homies. Why you, you see me getting love from a lot of different homies from all sides of Raymond. You know what I mean? And, and homies from different hoods. You know what I mean? But because I ran with a lot of different people. That's just the way you, you game bang and you come up. That's how it is. But I'm going to share this story with y'all about one of my closest, so my loved ones, rest in peace. My homie John Frazier, a.k.a. Rip Dog, used to be Lil Rip Dog. We just called him Rip Dog right now. You know what I mean? Rest in peace, Rip Dog. Me and Rip, we go back. To like we was young i'm a year older than rip so i'm 54 right now rip will be 53 uh damn i'm showering the motherfucking mic so hey nigga been at work somewhat i'm tired yeah and anyway me and rip go back we met um first met i first met rip and this this little duplex is on vermont in the hood and 12 is called the, the garden the gardens where back in the days where all of us baby ramis we pretty much hung out at. And I say baby Ramos, I mean my generation of Ramos. This third generation, all of us that's baby homies, we pretty much hung up in these places called the guards. The homie Snipe and Baby Pig stayed over there. I think the homie Bam, rest in peace, they stayed up in there too. But it's right on Vermont behind the boys' market, right here, as you can see from the pictures. But anyway, we used to dwell over there and across the street at the L Center, this whole little area around right here on Vermont. So it should be just a bunch of young Ramos, both sides of the streets. We just be out there. We just you know, we was with the shits. Baby Ramos was active at this time. We was deep out there. This is before the Tiny Lokes. This is the mid-80s. This is 1985, 1986, and on up around that era. So I met Rip. Rip got out of camp. I think he got out like in like 86 or something like that. And I met Rip over here in the gardens. So we met, we exchanged, you know, our rays as we get out, as we say. Um, we connected, of course. We all just hung out, young niggas just in the hood, hanging out, drinking and smoking weed, that type of shit. And then I didn't see him for like about a month or two. I ran across him again. I checked in the lock. I went to the lock. I ran across Rip, uh, the homie Little Devil. Every Mondo, rest in peace from 111, was up there. Uh, Nick from 10-5 was up there. Baby Bear from 8-9 was up there at this time. It was so many of us up there. Lock was like, to me, Lock was... Lock was the ultimate gangbang school, man. It's like everybody there seemed like they gangbang. And this to the point, I was at Lock. I was in one class all day back in these bungalows behind the damn, what, we, what, what the cafeteria was at over there on St. Street. We used, to, we used to all hang out right there on St. Street. That was at the post. I said, niggas just went to school, just G'd up. 
just just crip. That's all we did. This this crazy. We are high school students. You know what I mean? Cause say I've been doing this shit since I was a kid, y'all. You know what I mean? I'm not one of these cats who start game banging with YouTube, start game banging with entertainment, start game banging after high school and and I'm in my twenties. Nah, bro. I've been with this shit way far back. I was a kid, a real baby, Raymond Crip, straight up. You know what I mean? So anyway, we we used to hang out up in there. We did our thing, whatever. And from from lock. Me and Rip just continued to kick in and shit. Rip was, at the time, Rip was staying like on 90, 90 something in Broadway. 90, I don't know if it's 97th, 95th. I don't know. One of them right there, a little corner spot, like a, like a building. It was like, like a, it's still there to this day. I rolled past there recently and I seen that's like, that's, the, that's what Rip stayed at. It's this building around the corner of 90 shit, man. It's on the west side of 90 something, 96, whatever, right? And like a regular building. But upstairs, his mom and them had a little apartment and shit up there. So it was after school, we'd walk from lock, walk way over there, hang out up in there and shit, kick it. Little niggas heating up chip Hoy cookies in the motherfucking oven and shit type shit, right? You know, we, we just, little niggas going up there and we'd catch the bus, to walk down the Century, catch the RTD, the Inglewise. We go to Inglewise, we in the motels fucking around over there. This was our regular program as young niggas. We get the Inglewise, we fucking with the other homies. So, you know, we just young homies running together. So this nigga ripped. You know, I stopped going to school. I just eventually just stopped going. I just like, fuck school, nigga. Just say, fuck school, nigga, bang with me. That's pretty much was the mentality. That's pretty much what I did, said, fuck school. So I dropped out of Lock High School in 11th grade. That was it for me. I didn't finish high school. I didn't finish high school until I was in prison. <laughs> Pelican Bay, shit. Donovan, one, I swear I got my motherfucking GED in prison. So I didn't finish high school. I dropped out of Lock High School in 11th grade. And that was that for school with me, bro. Anyway, uh, me and Rip, like I said, we continue to build, be homies, and we fucking around the streets getting into shit. Something happened, man. I don't know what, what it was. Rip used to come around his mama car. Rip, them niggas would get mad and take his mama car and come to the hood. Rip come to the hood with Lil Spoonie and I think Jackpot and some more homies. They come through this little blue car and shit all the time, come to the motel. And that's what the 12 old homies do. They come in and watch. We be in the motels our own century or some shit like that. They pull up in there. We kicking them niggas hanging out. One night, Rip come over there. <laughs> I guess nigga coming down the 104th from the 12 rows or wherever he's coming from. And he coming down the 104th. As soon as he crossed Crenshaw, he going through the mafias. Them niggas popped on him over there. Them niggas was, I think they was hanging out the window, banging on some Crenshaw mafias. Some niggas popped. Nigga came to the motel. Nigga, mama, <laughs> hold back window to the side window and shit was shattered out and shit. This nigga Rip, like, cuz these niggas. So, you know, we mount up, you know, young niggas as active Crips at the time. You know, we, we did our shit. But this nigga don't stop, you know what I mean? This this nigga, like, you know, he, he riding around his mama car. He ain't been home in his mama car for one, right? Then got his mama car for like two days now. This nigga, mama car, the, the side window is shot out already. Now, he been putting it work in his car now, right? This car, the enemies know, like, they recognize that car. One night, we riding, we in the 60s. We... <laughs> We coming down uh, Florence. We coming down Florence. It's be like the Louisiana chicken right there on the corner of Florence and Van Ness. This nigga Rip coming down. He flying down Florence. We in two different cars though. He in one car. We follow him in another car. This nigga flying down Florence, right? <laughs> and the nigga don't stop at the light, man. The nigga, you know, y'all people, LA, y'all know that area right there, Florence and Van Ness, where the chicken spot at. This nigga Rip just run through the light, man. Just Mac, this mama car hit this motherfucking car. This car fly all up on the motherfucking thing by the Louisiana chicken right there. The nigga don't stop. Nigga, the motherfucking battery is hanging off the front of the car on the motherfucking the battery post cable. The battery is dangling. The lights is out. This nigga spin around some kind of way. We going down Van Ness. We following like this nigga rip. Now we riding around because we was out. You know we y'all niggas putting in work. So we we rolling in two cars out. You know this the '80s niggas is banging. So you know that's why we roll like this. So now we going through the families. This nigga got. No fucking headlights, the battery hanging. And <laughs> it's like, damn, we ride down motherfucking Van Ness all the way down to motherfucking, I think, 89th or something. Bust that right down 89th. Go all the way down, we just turn into a uh, backside of Darby Park and the Forum and all that shit. 89th. Take that all the way down to Prairie and then bust the left and we slide all back <laughs> back to the motels on Century. This nigga Mama Car out there. So this nigga Mama Car, we get this motherfucker to the motel on Century. The whole front grill is gone. We look at this motherfucker, it's smoking. The battery thing hanging. He like, cuz, I'm gonna tell my mama. You know, this this nigga rip. Like, <laughs> niggas is like, yo, nigga, yo, yo, you don't get fucked up. Nigga, we got fucked off mom's car or whatever, right? So, I don't know what happened. The nigga, no, the nigga go to jail. Like I said, the car was hot. The niggas was active. The nigga go to jail. 
left the car right here in the motel on Century. That's where his mama car. Eventually they came and got it, but the shit was all fucked up. He gone to the halls. He up in, in the, he, he going through the system now. He gone. The car gone, right? Then this is my nigga Rip. Check this out. Now, by the time people, y'all know how the YA system is. Once you go, Rip going to YA for this shit. Now, he's not going back to camp. He's going to YA. So now he went to Norwalk, which is SRCC on Bloomfield. This nigga up in Norwalk, me and Lil' Stoney push up to, up to his little spot on the side of Norwalk on Bloomfield. It's just like condos and shit called the Norwalk Manors right behind SRCC. Me, Lil' Stoney, the homegirl Tina, and the homegirl Nikki one day. It was a Run DMC concert. Rip and Baby Whack, the homie Baby Whack, all niggas in jail. So these are my niggas, right? Like I said, I run with so many different homies. You know what I mean? It's like, you see me with Day Day, you, you see me with Kuwa, Baby T, Tiny C, you know what I mean? So many different homies, Lil' Stony. It's just so many different homies. I didn't ran with Mumbles, all of them, man. It's just, I, they, man, it's just, I, 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 I fuck with a lot of my homies. You know what I'm saying? I was really in them streets when I was coming up. I wasn't a nigga that was faking with his crib and I was out there really gang banging. I was in the streets, my nigga. So I ran with a bunch of people. So one day, me and Stoney, we go after this Run DMC concert. Him, Tina, and Lee, uh, Nikki come scoop me up. And, and this nigga daddy had the van. This nigga come to his daddy van and shit, we scoop me up. So we like, let's go see the homie Rip. We pull up to SRCC. We pull up in the Norwalk Manor early in the morning and we jump up on the hood of the motherfucking van and shit. The nigga rip on the little unit car Patola in the back, in the corner back there. Because behind SRCC was like old train tracks and shit, like a little park area people kick it at that lived in the Norwalk Manor. Now my eyes and shit get the water and shit. That's just motherfucking allergy. It's always one eye. Y'all do that shit? Y'all ever see that? Just one eye water and shit? That's crazy. This one don't, just this one don't, y'all. You know? But yeah, back to the story. So, we jump on the hood of the car and shit. We up here with the blue rags and shit, fucking around. We flagging the blue rag. Break, break, mug. Break, 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 mug. We and Stoney, and Stoney G'd up because he went to the concert. So this nigga got the motherfucking overalls on. Dang, hang blue rag and shit. He seed up like a motherfucker. I'm just up there with the, at this time, this one, the Run DMC Adidas sweaters. As I had the blue and white Run DMC sweaters with the suede blue, suede blue Adidas and shit like that. The, the, that bluish gray color khakis. You know, that was a nigga attire. You know, that was crip, crip, crip shit back in the day. But yeah, so a nigga on the hood of the car flagging the rags. Nigga, right, what? And the homie coming out going to breakfast and rip seeing us and shit. And he like chocolate up going to, going to breakfast and shit from Portola. And then nigga, we made that nigga day, man. You know what I mean? Because that was my nigga. You know what I'm saying? We went, stood up on the fence. They ran us out of there, though, but just to holler at the homie. Like, nigga, your homies is here. You know what I mean? We, we used to go by uh, motherfucking East Lake, too. Used to try to ride by East on the side of East Lake. Different times, like the homies in East Lake, and thinking niggas can see out of a window or some kind of shit. I ain't never been to East Lake. I, never, I only been to LP. I never been to Central. So, I mean, right by, the, right by the General Hospital, though. But just, just to see the homies, because niggas would be like, cuz, I miss the homies. You know what I mean? That's why a lot of us went to YA. I didn't go to YA. I, I miss YA. I was the first in my generation to go to the PN, because I went to the PN at 18. You know what I mean? But still, a lot of the homies that went to YA, they went, niggas kind of was like ready for YA at the time because the homies was in there and you seeing all these pictures of the homies in there and the homies was looking like they having fun, they squabbling up the niggas in there, they banging as young niggas, they repping, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, the homies like, you know, cuz we ready to go to you 32 and we ready, but nigga never went. I would have went, but <laughs> the nigga Nug, Nug spoke up for me, was it Judge Dorn or Scarlett? Might have been this, yeah, I think it's this nigga now, but I don't know, one of these judges I had Inglewood Court, Nug went in there and, was on the uncle roll in the for me one time. I was a juvenile and shit. Nug came in as an uncle and you know spoke up and said some cool fly shit to the judge and they cut me loose. So I I never been to YA, y'all. I never been to camp either. I just been to prison. But yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm saying though, Rip is my nigga, man. I love Rip. You know what I mean? Cause we went up there and hollered at Rip early in the morning just we wanted to see the homie. And we saw him. You know what I mean? He was trying to see the other homies. Uh but, you know, we just saw a rip before them people ran us up out of there. Now, let's get deeper into the story. We go through years, because now I'm in the pen. By the time I go to the pen, Rip's still in the youth authority. Uh, eventually, Rip came to the pen. I ran across him on my second term or something like that. Yeah, second term in Soledad. Uh, we just, you know, when you start doing time, you kind of, you know, you start missing each other. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like a lot of homies wish things today was like, it used to be, but it can't be, man, because we all grown, we older, bro. When we was younger, we just young niggas just hanging in the hood, so we had time to kick it and fuck around and do dumb shit or whatever shit all day. 
But now you grow, you got responsibilities and shit. Like, I can't kick it like that no more, bro. Got a family and shit. Nigga got kids and grandkids and shit. Niggas can't just, you know, wild out like we used to when we was young niggas. We was young niggas. That's what you did. Now we grown niggas. So we must do grown nigga shit. Grown man shit. That's what we got to do. We can't do the shit we did when we was young just because it was fun. Much as we might like to or want to, we can't do that shit no more. We too old for that shit. Niggas in their 50s and 60s and 40s and all that like nah bro you did it you got away with it you survived it chill that's simple right but yeah man uh rip rip like i said we start missing each other because we both doing time i'm in the pen i'm starting to do stretches he in and out you know what i mean so i don't see him last time I last time i seen him we was in the hole in solidad and Owing. and from there i ain't seen him no more Oh no, I tried, like the story I told y'all, I told y'all in the previous story about when I was squabbling with the dude that they tried to put in my cell in the county. The Piru dude, we got to the little square, the little squabble in there. Rip was right there next to the next cell next to me. That was the last time I seen Rip. I ain't seen him no more after that. No, yeah, beside of that. But anyway, I'm tripping. But yeah, anyway, one day, me and my homie Young Cuz Sellies and uh into Hatchby. We watching the news and shit. And we see, you know, high-speed chases and shit going on a lot in L.A. You see that shit on the news. We be watching that shit. And we like, this dude, he he robbed Albertsons. Uh, Albertsons and Torrance or something. And they getting high-speed chased. The police didn't get far, but ran into like a low embankment. Crashed the car and shit, right? So we watching this shit in the cell. And we see the standoff with the car and the police. Torrance police or whatever. Then you boom, pop. First, we don't know what it is. We think of the police popping, whatever. We don't know what it is. Come to find out, Tommy Rip, was, his mentality was, I ain't going back to the pen. I'm going to get rich and die trying. That's why he had hit the lick. I mean, he was going to hit the lick, this Albertson lick, and got it went bad. Instead of him going back to the pen, he's like, fuck that. I mean, and it's a trip because I saw that shit. I saw that shit li live on the news. I kid you not, 1998. I watched that shit. Didn't know it was him. And then when they pulled his body out the car on the gurney and they said his name, John Fraser, I was like, tell the young cuz, I'm like, cuz, that's Rip Dog name, cuz. Young cuz like, that ain't Rip though, cuz. Cuz ain't got no, cuz ain't tatted up. You know, I'm like, Rip ain't never had a lot of tattoos like that. You know what I mean? Why he thought he might have had a bunch of tattoos. I'm like, nah. Cause he got no tattoos like that. And he's big nigga on the big, since the carried him, you know, on the gurney out the car. So I'm like, damn, just showing his, his body, not showing, you know, the top part, just showing his arms and shit, they rush into the ambulance, whatever. So then by the time we get out the cell, I go jump on the horn, call my little bro, baby nub. I'm like, bro, what's, what's up? He said, yeah, that was ripped. I'm like, oh, no. He said, that was ripped. And he told him, he told him, uh, baby Nug, he told Baby Skull, hey boy, he told them all that, you know, this is what it is. He finna go do this, and if it go bad, this is what I'm about to do. Well, I done took his own life. You know what I mean? Just like, fuck that, I ain't going back to the joint. That takes some balls, you know. Uh, I, I, I won't ever do that kind of shit. I'm just gonna have to go do the time. I'm not I'm gonna shoot it out, whatever. They gonna have to kill me. I'm not. I can never do that. My first cousin done that same shit. That shit fucked me up. Like, damn. I can niggas just be like, fuck that. I'm finna, you know. It's like, nah, bro. You know, there's always another way, man. You never gotta do that, homie. There's always another way. Regardless, they put you in the joint. You still got a peel action, something. There's always another way out. You ain't never gotta do that. You know what I mean? But homie did that. That was my nigga. Saying, rip dog. We called that nigga lip dog. That nigga got some big old lips. He was a big young homie when we was kids. We was young nigga. He was the big nigga, big black nigga. You know what I mean? With squabbles. You know what I mean? It's, it's always some niggas like that when you're young. That especially being in the halls and shit. It's always somebody like that. It's always a big old nigga. You always ran across a nigga like that from East Coast or Hoover or something too. <laughs> like big old nigga. In, insane too. Long Beach niggas, they had niggas like that too. With Rip was the Avalon niggas, they you know what I mean. But Rip was just a big old nigga with lips, and you know he, he was just that nigga. But he got big. And Rip was a low man. 
Brett went out and killed himself, though, after that lick. You know I mean, at the time, the homies was doing good. A lot of the homies was out there having shit back then. And, uh, you know, niggas, niggas want to get on. So he was like, fuck it, cuz. I'm finna get my issue, too. Homies out here shining. I'm finna shine, too. Or I'm gonna go out and do it like this. If I don't make it, I'm gonna kill myself. Mentality. You know, oh, man, that's, that's a heavy one, though, bro. That fucked me up because I saw it. And this is somebody I came up with. I mean, you say sandbox. This is a sandbox nigga that I watched on the news, as well as many other homies that watched that shit. I, I, I've been trying to find the footage for this story for the longest. I couldn't get the footage. I can't find it. You know what I mean? But, man, that's, that was heavy. You know what I mean? You see that, somebody that you come up with, your loved one, do that shit live on the news. Rest in peace, Rip Dog.